All children except one grow up, and as we grow up, our early nightmares are plagued by the presence of a black-haired man, a pirate, with piercing blue eyes and a hook where his right hand ought to be, the villain who, like his nemesis, is timeless, James Hook. Captain James Bartholomew Hook is a character that every child and adult is familiar with. Many learn of him through Disney, but the character's origins and character himself are much more unique than the 1953 film will show you. Hook is cunning, deadly, and one of the most unique characters to ever come out of literature. Much of Hook's biographical information is unknown, such as his birthday, exactly where he was born, or even his real name. Many people don't realize that Hook isn't the real name of the pirate. J.M. Barry wrote in the novel that he chose not to reveal Hook's true identity, for fear that even today it would set the country in a blaze of horror. What this tells us is that Hook was actually a well-respected man in England's history. The question is who? Some of the information that is known is that Hook was born in England and attended Eton College. After college, Hook lived a life of chivalrous luxury, before eventually turning to piracy. He didn't leave behind his entire old life, though. Despite his murderous personality, Hook continued to practice his chivalrous personality, and became known as one of the most gentlemanly pirates ever to sail the seas. Regarding Hook's original portrayal, I liked the fact that he was a little more decadent because, um, because he was a parallel to Mr. Darling, who was sort of like this proper man. And uh, I just felt like they matched up a little more than making Hook this dirty dog that he's sort of become. And a lot of new things, it, uh, it just made the parallel more clear. Hook has been portrayed numerous times throughout the years, on stage, on film, and in different books. But most of those adaptations always forget a crucial part of Hook's character, and that it's he's obsessed with good form. He likes to keep himself clean, the respect of others is a necessity, and he sees himself as an English gentleman before a pirate. Hell, in one chapter of the book, he nearly murders his boatswain Smee simply because Smee shows signs of having a better personality than him, and thus good form. The only thing stopping him, murdering someone with good form, is bad form. He's a very well-mannered killer. As well-mannered as he may be, his acts of chivalry don't excuse his villainous nature. Captain Hook is a very dangerous man, and he makes sure to prove it throughout the stories he takes part in and Peter Pan is not the only one. J. M. Barry, the author of Peter Pan, was close friends with Robert Louis Stevenson, the author of Treasure Island. Both confirmed that Captain Hook and Stevenson's character, the murderous Long John Silver, had crossed paths before. From that moment on, Hook became the only man whom Silver was afraid of. I think Disney has really watered down people's perception of Hook's character. In the 1953 movie, we see the captain as this intimidating, yet comical man. He gets maybe two or three minutes on screen, where he's actually inflicting fear upon those who cross him. But before you know it, he's been condensed down to this scared, spoiled, childlike shell of everything he's supposed to be. I mean, this is a man who kills children for fun. This is a man who slaughters the Neverland natives solely for their treasure. This is a man who slit the throat of one of his own pirates simply because the pirate brushed against him and rustled his coat up a little bit. Captain Hook always makes sure to assert himself, but perhaps what separates him the most from other historic villains is not power or the ability to strike fear into others. What makes Hook stand out as a villain is the fact that he allows his own fears to show. I think uh, something that makes him really unique as a villain, Captain Hook, is uh, how terrified he is of something, especially something simple, like a crocodile, because most villains are painted as these fearless figures that are like, Psh, you don't know me, you'll be no problem. But Captain Hook, like, has just this real primal fear of an alligator or a crocodile. And he didn't go all Captain Ahab and try and get revenge on the beast that took his limb. No, he's just like, oh, I'm outclassed, I better stay away from the crocodile because it will eat my hand and it will eat the rest of me now. The job of an antagonist is to complement the protagonist. There are few villains who do this better than Hook. However, the Buccaneer wasn't always the antagonist of Peter Pan. Originally, Peter was going to be the villain of his own story. But when J.M. Barry discovered children's fascinations with pirates, he created Hook and his gang of crooks. The story has felt complete since then. There's no better character to complement the boy 
who never grows up. Hook is the polar opposite of Peter Pan. He's everything that Peter, given his way, never will be. Peter's obviously represents childhood and the ignorance that comes with it. He doesn't have a shred of maturity in him. Hook, on the other hand, slight pun intended there, is an adult who is just that, an adult. Every ounce of childlike wonder has been squeezed out of him, and he's left as this sad, lonely man who has no idea what he truly wants in life. For Hook, Peter is like this youthful, jubilant kid, and he can do whatever he wants. Like, he can be an Indian chief or fly around and kind of does his own thing, but Hook's almost like a prisoner to his ship. Peter's, I guess, everything he could have been or he wants to be in life. Um, and I guess that's why he's so, he's so grumpy. Such a grumpy fella. The story wants us, the readers, to find the middle ground between these two characters and follow that path in life. You want to leave behind immaturity altogether, but you should still take a bit of childhood with you. Hook is a perfect representation of what going too far into adulthood looks like. He's adulthood. Um, Peter Pan's the reverse of that, right? From an adult's perspective, a disorderly child hates it. And they're like, oh, this, this is terrible. This kid wants me to die because I can't sleep and I can't deal with him. And that's what he is. He's this little sociopath that just wants to kill adults. It's crazy. And that's the thing that uh, makes the ending kind of unsatisfying for me in a way. It's weird, right? Like, Peter Pan just wins. Why does he win? Why is he better? He's crazy. He kills, he wants to kill adults. You're like, hey, Lost Boys, how about we kill some adults? We're gonna be kids forever. It just ends that way, like, Peter Pan just kills the adult and feeds him to a crocodile, which the adult was most afraid of in the world. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Captain James Hook. The name alone strikes fear into children who hear it. He is a character unlike any other, a villain who captures the essence of everything a villain should be. Chivalrous, murderous, and armed at all times, Hook truly is the sleaziest sleaze of the Seven Seas.